First, HyperOS 3 GUI got a major upgrade. Icons are finally updated. The previous set was used from MIUI 11 to HyperOS 2, but now they've switched to new ones. Compare the two sets. The gallery icon, for example, looked like this, and now it's a petal shape. Or the calculator, it used to look like this, and now it looks like this. Almost every system icon has been upgraded. The messages app changed from the yellow icon to this green one. As for the texture, compared to before, it looks much better. It has that light, condensed material feel. The top status bar UI has changed. It looks thicker. Isn't the most obvious change the battery icon? Look, the battery on the Hyper S3 looks so much better than the one on the Hyper S2. A lot of people complained about the old battery icon, and now it's finally been updated. If you compare all the seat icons, you can clearly see the difference. The new version uses solid icons, while the old ones were hollow. The advantage of solid icons is that they're much clearer and more intuitive, right? Another upgrade is that Hyper OS 3 has now added a lot of UI effects similar to liquid glass. For example, the search bar has a kind of glow on the top and bottom, like a piece of frosted glass reflecting the surrounding scene. And the search bar at the top also has a halo around it, doesn't it? When you customize by pinching, you can see these four icons. The round ones also have a bit of a reflective effect on the top and bottom. But unlike Apple, it's not rendered in real time. Liquid glass isn't like that. In Hyper OS 3, it's more like a material. For example, look here in the photo album, these two icons also have that glossy effect on the top and bottom. But if you scroll up and down, you'll notice it's still like frosted glass at the bottom. For instance, the red part underneath is reflected, but the real-time refraction and reflection effect doesn't actually show that red glow. Non-real-time rendering is more energy efficient, saving power compared to real-time rendering. It might get upgraded next year. The lock screen has also changed. Long press and tap to customize. Swipe down, and the first option has changed. Humanistic photography, natural scenery, and eastern aesthetics remain the same, but Hyper OS 3 added a brand new classic lock screen. In this classic lock screen, you can see it's all about those flower petals. The time and date are centered, with flower petals covering part of the time. This sophistication, this aesthetic, I feel it elevates the look. In the humanistic photography section below, there are new options. For example, this swimming one and this pink one, both are new humanistic photography styles. The custom editing feature is also upgraded. Previously, in Hyper OS 2, if you wanted to edit the lock screen, you could only edit this one style. If you tapped it, you could only switch between these styles, but you couldn't change the overall style. It had to stay like this. But now, in Hyper OS 3, when you customize, you can choose the font and change the color. Switch to different lock screen clock styles clock settings. Look, this extra large clock, this one with an eastern aesthetic. You can even use the full screen magazine style look photo magazine. All these can be directly applied to any theme. The level of customization is much higher. In this custom wallpaper section, they've added an entry for AI generated wallpapers at the bottom. Previously, this entry was buried. You had to go into settings, personalization, then wallpapers, where there was only one entry. You had to tap many times to get to AI dynamic wallpapers. Now, you can generate AI wallpapers directly from almost any recent interface. Plus, there are more styles for AI generation, like original, anime, and more. There are also healing and Chinese ink wash 3D anime styles. All these options are available. Previously, only dynamic wallpapers could be generated. Now, you can also generate static wallpapers. Hyper OS 3 has further optimized smoothness. Let's test it. We'll start Honor of Kings. You can see I've entered the game, then I minimize it to a small window. At this point, only Honor of Kings is running in the background with no other apps. Next, I'll put it down at the bottom and then open these 20 apps in a row, starting with WeChat. Pretty smooth, right? Each app opens with almost no frame drops. The overall smoothness is still pretty good. This phone we're using is the Xiaomi 15 Ultra, equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 leading edition mobile platform. Its performance is already really good. If you use Xiaomi's own Xuanjie chip, like in the 15S Pro, it'll definitely be even smoother than the 15 Ultra because Xiaomi can make deep, system-level architectural adjustments to the Xuanjie 01, including optimizing the animation rendering pipeline and so on, which could make it even smoother. Also, this time there are many optimizations in the animations. For example, 
When you swipe down from the home screen to open search, previously on HyperOS, it looked like this. It used to just flash in, bam, it would pop up, right? And it would even twitch a bit, right? It would kind of shake. But now, look at how smooth it is. It goes back the same way it came. And overall, the effect is way more seamless than before. Also, the search bar has moved from the top to the bottom now. When I edit the search content, see how much more convenient it is. Another example, a lot of system apps now have this continuous animation where the transition in and out is seamless. For instance, when I tap on another album in the photo gallery, you see it zooms in. See, it zooms in when you tap, right? It zooms in, and then when you minimize, it shrinks back down, back to where it came from. Wasn't it different before? For example, if I tap here before, it would just slide in like this, right? It would come in like this, wouldn't it? The same animation is in the calendar. For example, tap into month view, see, it opens like this. Then tap this, it expands, and when you go back, it shrinks. This is also an expanding animation. Almost everywhere uses this effect. Look, it expands. It shrinks back. It's already done pretty well. When the official version comes out, the effect should be even better than now, with further upgrades. Xiaomi supports the super dynamic island. Xiaomi has joined the island club. In HyperOS 2, there are two dynamic island features. One is the dynamic forehead, which shows up when I'm charging. As soon as you plug it in, you see this big forehead display? It shows fast charging, percentage, and so on. The other feature is the 9 o'clock notification. If I'm using a countdown timer, I start a timer here. And when I go back, you see timer notification appears in this spot. It only shows the current amount, and you can't expand it. If I tap it, you see, it goes straight back to the timer. Now, zero degree forehead displays and charging notifications are turned into the super guide feature. For example, let me charge the Hyper S3 phone now. See the super guide? It just shows up like this. And if I set a timer, when I swipe up, you see, it turns into the super guide. Plus, now the super guide is clickable too. Look, when I tap it, it changes to this form. It shows the countdown, and I can pause it here or just turn it off directly. Now, if I tap it directly, it'll take me to the timer app. But if I pull down, it'll open a small window, right? That's convenient. Swipe up, and it goes back to the super guide. The super guide supports system apps, charging, Bluetooth headphones, and apps like Mape One Waimai, Taobao, ELE.me for food delivery, or DD for ride hailing and trip assistance. They all show up in the super guide format directly. It's much more unified. It won't be split into two forms like before, with the floating forehead and current notifications. When multiple super guides are displayed, you switch between them well thought out. For example, right I have a ride, a recording, and a timer, and you can switch modules by swiping. See, nothing is displayed. Switching between these two, then to this one. The back and forth switching is really smooth. When you tap, it turns into a small window. Tap, it's a small window. Tap, it switches to a small window. Tap, it switches to a small window. It's super smooth. The animation can be interrupted, and you can switch between paper-like functions. In settings, there's a more settings. Special features, copy direct access. What does this do? When you copy code, address, or account number, automatically pops up Super Island to guide you directly to that app. For example, with this address, if I select it and tap copy, immediately pops up go to map. Now, if I tap navigate, I can use got a map to start navigation. Another example, if you copy a tracking number, it will open Alipay directly. Tap view, and you can check tracking info right inside Alipay. In this third gen update, Super Shout AI's UI has also been upgraded. It still has three modes. The first is voice mode. You can wake it with your voice or by long pressing the power button. See, now it immediately starts listening to me, translating what I say, and will show suggestions above. If you tap this, you can also input text directly. And these suggestions will be different depending on the app you're in. For example, right now in WeChat, when I check it, you'll see options like view WeChat QR code, open WeChat payment code, and other WeChat related features. But if you long press it in Weibo, look, you will see options like view my comments, search Weibo, or open Weibo trending topics all Weibo related. The small red bar at the bottom, when double tapped, now defaults to direct text input. Unlike HyperOS 2, where double tapping still triggered voice input, 
Hyper OS 3 allows direct typing to Xiaoyi. The third form is long pressing the navigation bar. This shrinks the screen, enabling text or element selection and recognition. You can ask questions directly, select all, copy, and translate. It's not obvious, but you can still select all. It just feels like the interface hasn't changed. With this update, the most interesting feature is the one-step direct access function. You can use a single sentence to carry out complex commands. For example, scan Weibo QR code. It started executing and opened Weibo. I tapped it. Did you see that? Then I tap the scan code icon in the top right corner. And you see, the scan code interface pops up. These steps aren't pre-programmed. They're learned step by step through screen recognition training. It's a model, so no matter what interface you're on, it can always get you to the Weibo scan code screen. For example, if I'm on this training topics page, I can still tell it to scan a Weibo QR code, scan Weibo QR code. See, it went back. Look, it canceled that previous pop-up and tapped on me, then tap on scan code. See? No matter what screen you're on, it always finds the right path to perform the action. For example, in JD.com, let's go to the price protection page, JD.com price protection. Execute return. Menu. All right, go to customer service. Tap on price protection. See? It helps you tap through step by step. It does this by recognizing the screen and building a model. It's real AI helping you find your way around the interface. Personally, I think this feature has huge potential for the future. Basically, it's teaching the phone, or rather the model, how to operate the phone like a human, where to tap, whether to swipe, and how to find things. So in the future, you might be able to get your phone to do anything for you with just a single sentence. I think it's convenient. A achievement of Hyper OS 3 is that the ecosystem integration between it and Apple is smooth. It supports dual device connectivity with the iPhone. If you download the Xiaomi Interconnect app on your iPhone, open it, and connect your phone, it looks like this. This notification transfer and sync feature. It syncs notifications from four apps, phone calls, text messages, WeChat, and QQ from your Xiaomi 15 Ultra to your iPhone. I turned them on here. It immediately asks for my authorization on the 15 Ultra. I can just pop up an authorization prompt to allow notification access. Click Allow, and it's enabled. I've also enabled SMS, WeChat, and QQ notifications. Now, I'll have my colleagues send me a WeChat message. My WeChat is logged in on this Xiaomi 15 Ultra. WeChat isn't logged in here, and both phones are locked. I'll have my colleagues send me a message. See, the message pops up on both sides simultaneously. WeChat is logged in on this phone and the Xiaomi shows a notification. At the same time, you can see the Xiaomi Interconnect service also pops up this message. It shows a WeChat notification, and below it is the Xiaomi Interconnect icon. If I tap this notification, I can go straight into it. In the mirrored screen, it mirrors the WeChat on my Xiaomi phone, so I can reply. I'll reply on my way. Once I send it, the message goes through, which means I'm basically remotely controlling my Xiaomi phone. See? The reply on my way was sent right away. Plus, now the photos and videos on the iPhone can be shared directly to WeChat on the Xiaomi. Look, I tap share here, then swipe right to find Xiaomi Interconnect service and tap it. All right, it jumps straight to send it to my Xiaomi device or to a WeChat contact, moments, or a QQ contact. I'll send it to a WeChat contact and it lets me choose which chat to send it to. I'll pick this one and hit send. It's been sent and I can see it. I just sent a video from the iPhone, and it arrived instantly. When sharing files, Xiaomi now supports tap to share. If you take a nice photo on Xiaomi phone and want to send it to your iPhone, you tap send, and simply tap the backs of the phones together. Quick share. Look, there's a response here. It pops up right away. Tap to open it. And then, see, it gets set over directly on this side. Over here, you just receive it directly. Look at that photo. It was sent over just like that. You can also use tap to share for Wi-Fi passwords. For example, tap to share the Wi-Fi password, and you see it instantly generates a QR code. Just tap the backs of the phones together for quick sharing. Once the backs touch, 
it immediately opens this mini program on the other phone. Tap to open, tap to send, and it joins the hotspot right away. Done. Now, the features we just showed require both phones to be on the same local network or for one phone to be connected to the other phone's hotspot. That's the only way you can use the features we just demonstrated. But actually, the first time you use Tap to Share or Tap, it will automatically connect the iPhone to the Xiaomi hotspot. Overall, it's still pretty convenient. Beyond Notification Sync, features like Find Device, Hotspot Enabling, and Direct Mirroring of QQ and WeChat apps are available. You can set up these cool features. Let me show you the impressive Find Device function. My Xiaomi phone just rang making it easy to find. I can also directly enable the hotspot. Just tap to turn it on and instantly join the Xiaomi Book Ultra's Wi-Fi. It's already activated. I can open any app, like WeChat, and mirror it directly. What's showing now is the WeChat app from my phone, mirrored here. Three more features. Xiaomi Share, which lets you send files directly to Xiaomi devices. When I tap Xiaomi Share, I can send files or photos right away. As for the Xiaomi Cloud album, it lets you transfer photos and videos from your iPhone directly to Xiaomi Cloud. Once you verify, you can upload them. Lastly, the Find feature allows you to directly check the location of your Xiaomi devices. My Pad 7 Ultra is in Beijing, and my Xiaomi 15 Ultra is in Hangzhou. On the iPad, all those iPhone features are also available. Plus, there's a new feature called Magic Share Desktop. You can use your iPad to directly view and control your Xiaomi phone's desktop. I just have to enable it, Look, there's even a mini desktop to start using. See, now a window just popped up, and this window is showing my phone. When you tap on the size option, the desktop interface appears fully synchronized. I can directly control my Xiaomi phone from the iPad. For example, I can open regular apps, and both sides are in sync. I can also change the layout. On the iPad, you can choose different modes, like if you tap side pull, it moves over here. You can drag it inward. This is a feature of iPad, and it works on Mac. If you install Xiaomi Interconnect on Mac, you can connect to Xiaomi 15 Ultra and directly control it from Mac, or transfer files, photos. When using Miaoshu Desktop on Mac, there are new features. For example, let's open Miaoshu Desktop. See, I've synced it directly here. Both sides are synced. I can also control it directly from here. For example, I can open settings, no problem. Going back, you can see it works swiping left and right. No problem at all. Now, for example, if I open an app, just anything, and swipe up on this, you'll see there's a brand new button here. After tapping it, look, the browser just popped out of this window and became a separate app. Over here, I can still do other things, like open maps. The browser works here, and maps works here too, and both are using the phone's processing power. If your Xiaomi phone gets locked, and you try to launch this desktop mode again, it will attempt to do so. Use the MacBook Air's Touch ID to unlock my Xiaomi phone. Watch, I'll unlock it now. And you can see that the Xiaomi phone over here is unlocked as well. Also, if you open a WeChat mirror down here, you'll notice that what it opens is not the mobile version of WeChat, but rather a tablet version. See, it has split left and right columns. Just like when you use it on a tablet, it's not the single column layout you get on a phone. This is a brand new feature, Satisfied? Let us know in the comments. Personally, I think this time, Surge is really ahead of the game. When multiple brains are present, their display and interaction logic are reasonable. In terms of Apple ecosystem integration, Xiaomi has done something different. You can directly open WeChat from your Xiaomi phone on your iPhone. And there's also iPad screen mirroring. This feature is cool. Lastly, there's Super Xiao AI's AI jump capability. Through large model training, it achieves automated execution, unlike pre-designed programs.